Hey, it's Kaylin, and this is my May wrap-up. I read four books in May, and I had a May TBR of about five books, so I came close, and I read actually three of the books that I had planned to read for my May TBR, and the rest were um, different ones that I had chosen. Um, like I had said before that I'm kind of a mood reader, and I don't always stick to TBRs, so... I read a few that I planned to and a few that I didn't. So without further ado, I will get into what I read. The first book I finished in May was I'll Be Gone in the Dark. And it kind of needs no introduction right now. It's very popular. It's about the Golden State Killer and one woman's search for him. She actually uh, named him the Golden State Killer. He was known as the East Area Rapist. He raped some 50 women in the state of California and murdered about 12, including both men and women, some who were couples. And they just recently caught him several weeks ago in Sacramento. And he was living in California the whole time. The, the rapes and the murders went on in the 70s and 80s. And there was a time that he fell off the radar basically from 1986 to about today. They were able to catch him with um, Ancestry.com, I believe, or some kind of uh, family heritage software and just investigations. And I'm not sure exactly how closely they used this book to help the investigation. Uh, I didn't do a lot of research on that, but the book was scary. It was a page turner. Uh, there was a very interesting and creepy part where the author talks about her own experience with a murder that happened in her neighborhood when she was living in the Chicago area. And when she was, so this was happened when she was about a kid. And so that was one of the creepier moments, I thought. And that had really nothing to do with the Golden State Killer. But all the details, um, her examination of all the victims and the, what their stories were, was very interesting and intriguing and also just the techniques that they used to kind of theorize where he could be using grids in neighborhoods and which neighborhoods he avoided and which routes he had taken on the highway. Uh, so that was all very fascinating and I gave this book I think four out of five stars. It was a solid read. The epilogue is fantastic by Michelle McNamara. She actually, as most people know, I'm sure by now she passed away before she finished the book. And her researchers, the people she partnered up with to help her uh, investigate this, do research on it, they finished the book for her. And her late husband, comedian uh, Patton Oswalt, Oswalt, excuse me, did um, kind of an afterword kind of tribute to her. So it was very good, very interesting story and very relevant to the time. So the next book I read was quite different and just kind of a silly read. It was called The Chocolate Touch. And this book, I was taking a trip out of town and I decided to get a short book to listen to. So this is an audio CD. Uh, it's a children's book. It was written by Patrick Skeen Catling. And it was written in, I think, the 70s or the 80s. I remember it when I was growing up. I remember seeing it. I had never read it before. It's about this boy who loves nothing but chocolate and candy. That's all he eats. That's all he wants to eat. His parents are trying to get him to eat healthier and he'd eat his vegetables and everything. And he doesn't want to. Well, he goes to this kind of mysterious chocolate shop and he buys... Um, a box of chocolates and it contains like one piece of chocolate in it and he eats it and ever since that time he notices that everything he puts in his mouth tastes like chocolate. Uh, so he's brushing his teeth the first thing he does and it the toothpaste tastes exactly like chocolate and so it's basically a curse that he's under so um, the chocolate touch his name is John Midas, so it's a reference to King Midas and the Golden Touch. Uh, this was kind of silly. It's a very, very, kid, very much a kid's book. Um, the narration of the boy's voice was very irritating. <laughs> so um, I, I didn't really get into this. This was like, it was about an hour and 18 minutes total listening time. 
So it was just kind of a quick kind of maybe fun read to get through when I was driving. So, and the next book that I finished was The Last Unicorn by Peter Beagle. This is a fantasy novel that was written in 1968. And I talked about this a little bit on my channel before that I was planning on reading it. I finished it. I did a podcast with my cousin who has a podcast uh, where he reads science fiction, fantasy, and horror novels and then watches the corresponding films or television shows to them. So if there was a book written and then it became a movie based on that book or it became a television show, he reviews it and the book and then he reviews the TV or the movie. So his podcast is called No Deodorant in Outer Space and I was able to do that podcast with him. It won't be out for a while, but I might do a review video on The Last Unicorn and I have not seen this book talked about ever. Um, it's kind of his most famous work. He writes a lot of fantasy uh, short stories and he has a few no other novels out. And so this is basically about um, a unicorn who is told by a magical butterfly that she is the last unicorn um, basically in the world. She doesn't believe it. She always figures there were other unicorns around somewhere, even though she lived all alone. Um, so she goes on a quest to figure out what happened to the other unicorns. Uh, she finds uh, along the way some interesting characters. There's one who is a magician who's actually kind of a struggling magician. He can't quite get his magic right. And he, ta he casts a few spells that don't work out the way that he wants them to. And Anyway, along the quest, they meet another woman who decides to accompany them on their travels, and they are sent to uh, a king's castle because they hear that he has something to do with this, and there's a red bull that apparently has been driving the unicorns away. So this is kind of all speculation and, and, and rumor, but they want to find out if there's truth to it and if it's if they will be able to find what happened to the unicorns. So they go on this quest. The, the book itself is, is good. It's, it's, it's swiftly paced. It's not very long, but the, the writing is beautiful. It's very poetic. It's kind of lyrical. It kind of reads like, kind of like a, a long song, but not in a heavy handed way. Uh, there's a lot of metaphor and just very symbolic and, uh, it's enjoyable. The characters are enjoyable. Schmendrick is the magician, and he's actually my favorite character. Uh, it's a good book for, I would say, children could read it, young adults and adults. So it's sort of one of those books. It's kind of a fairy tale for any age. So I would, re I would recommend it. Excuse me. I gave this um, a three and a half star out of five on Goodreads. And to me, that is a solid rating. I'm pretty picky with my ratings. I don't give out many five-star ratings. Um, so a, a good, solid book. And the last book that I finished in the month of May is Between Breaths by Elizabeth Bar Vargas. And she is a host of 2020, or was. I think she just left 2020 to go host a show on a and &E. And she is... She was the host on 2020 along with David Muir, and I always kind of liked her presence on, on TV. She, um, 2020 is a lot of stories about true crime and unbelievable situations and uh, a lot of, it's kind of like Dateline, but for, for ABC. So um, I, I kind of like her and I found her memoir and I didn't realize it, but she suffers from panic and anxiety, and also alcoholism, which really surprised me because she seems to have it all, you know, all together, and she's very kind of composed and poised on camera, but um, she turns out she has a lot, she, or she had a lot of demons that she was hiding from a lot of people, and um, this is her story. She basically grew up traveling a lot with her family. Her father was in the military and had to go to Vietnam. So she lived actually in Japan before that for a few years and was moving from place to place and went to many, many different schools 
And so from a very young age, that really caused her a lot of fear and anxiety. She was jumping around a lot and, and being left behind by her parents and having to stay with babysitters. And so she tells us in the beginning that she didn't she doesn't know if she was born an alcoholic, but she was definitely born um, with anxiety. So this is her story. It's kind of her, it's also kind of following her rise to um, success with ABC in her shows and just some of the disappointments and uh, failures that she kind of, that she encountered trying to get different job opportunities with ABC. And it kind of examines the competition between, you know, the higher up there anchors like Diane Sawyer and um, I think his name, Charlie, I can't remember his name, but some other big name and just kind of there, there's a sense of competition. And she kind of was a little bit naive when she was trying to get up there and succeed. And but she still found her place on ABC and she loved her job with 2020 and and so but at the mean at the same time she was struggling with drinking and she ended up going through a lot of a lot of difficulties with that even with a husband and two kids she kind of basically um missed out on a lot of things as a mother because of her problems with drinking and it goes through her course in rehab and everything and I'm not giving things away it it, it gives this it gives this away in on the by reading a description basically on the back of the book so this was interesting I, I would have liked to have known more about her physical struggles going through detox when she went into rehab she kind of just goes into it and says you know I was very lonely I desperately wanted to go home but most time alcoholics go through a really really difficult withdrawal process when they go to rehab so I don't know if maybe she just didn't suffer that as much but or maybe I'm just basing it off of celebrity rehab or these shows that I've seen um, but I would have liked to have known more about what she suffered physically when she went through it. It just would have given it a little bit more depth, I think. And I was sort of also curious about the t different 2020 episodes she had done. And she gives a little bit about the stories she has, but not a whole lot. And she only discusses, she kind of mentions David Muir, who is her co-host, maybe twice in passing. So I kind of figured he'd be more of a significant um, uh, addition in this story, but but overall, I liked it. I thought she was very brave and very honest and very real. So it's kind of a story you don't expect from someone who seems to have it all together and is on top of her game. Um, but the truth is, really, everyone's suffering from something, and she is good about reminding us that. And it's refreshing to read about that from someone so famous and and successful. So anyway, that is my uh, wrap up for May. I will be doing a June TBR and not a moment too soon because it is already June 2nd. And I will probably pick maybe four or five books. I don't know. And like I said, I don't always stick to TBRs, but it's kind of fun to do them anyway and then look back at the end of the month and see how many I actually uh, followed through with on reading. So anyway, that's it. And I hope to see you soon in my next video and enjoy any books that you're reading and let me know in the comments what you are reading and maybe what you plan to get into for June. Um, and I will see you later. Have a great day. Bye.